I'm a filmmaker. I've worked in film, video, and television for over 30 years. I took a little break, but now I'm back. Welcome to another edition of Art Imitates Life. I'm Tanya Dixon in the greatest place to be today. I get to talk to some more of my lovely R&B folks. You know, we're, we're going to do a whole lot of things here on Art Imitates Life. You know, like I said before, it's, it's entertainment to politics, but it seems like we've been doing a little slow roll on the R&B and I, I'm, I'm loving it. So today in the house, we have the multi-award winning group Rough Ends will be in the house in just a few moments. So you all sit back, relax, and we'll get it all kicked off in just a few moments. Our Imitates Live with Tanya Dixon is being sponsored by Candyland Global, bringing your multimedia dreams to life. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our Imitates Life podcast with Tanya Dixon on both Podbean and on YouTube. Welcome back to Art Imitates Live. And as promised, I said I was going to have the multi-award winning group here. Ruffins is in the house. How are you doing, guys? Hello. How are you, Tanya? Yeah, good. I, you introduce yourselves individually, and then we, we're going to talk about the, your, your nicknames. I like that. So let's, let's do that first. Well, um, I'm Dante Chi Jordan. And I'm David DaVinci Chance. Okay. Now, what I wanted to bring out was that I like the Da Vinci because I said, oh, oh, okay. These are you picked up on that. Yes, mm-hmm. they, they painting portraits with that beautiful music. I love mm-hmm. that. So I said, we're going to talk about that here. But, you know, I saw that you all are also from Baltimore. You've been in the game for a little while. We're going to dig in and figure out, you know, talk about how you got started and talk about this industry. But let's go ahead and talk about your story, the beginning. How did you all get started? And I do understand that there was an original group and you all are the results of, of, from the breakup of a group. Am I correct? Um. Uh, I wouldn't say you could. I guess you could say breakups, but it was really like. Uh, so I guess I'll go back to the beginning. Like you said, um, me and Dante's family kind of knew. We grew up in the same area. We kind of knew each other, um, and you know, I, I knew his cousin. I was best friends with one of his cousins and stuff like that. Like growing up in the neighborhood, that kind of thing. But in high school, we reconnected. I was in the music room. And um, Dante saw me around the piano with some other guys singing, and we started singing together. 
just to give you a long story short. So um, we we started a group, you know, we had, it was a four man group. Cause at that time, Jodeci and Boyz II Men was probably, I would say our biggest inspiration at the time. You know what I mean? Like it was all about harmony and quartet harmony back in the nineties. It was about groups, you know what I mean? So we really wanted to be like the groups that we love. And we did we never saw a two man. It's not that was nothing we never really wanted to be because we wanted to harmonize, you know. Two part harmony is cool, but it ain't nothing like a four part or a three part harmony, you know what I mean? That's some real harmony, you know what I mean? So that's what we was trying to achieve. So um there's a gentleman by the name of Scola De Niro or people call him Ruth Scola. He was actually a part of Drew Hill at one time. Um, I think the song, Love You, the Love You song um, that they came out with. I don't know if you remember that era, but he was a part of, remember Drew Hill, just to give you perspective of who he is. But in Baltimore, he was a hometown legend. He was, before Drew Hill and before we even came out, when we were kids, like 15, 16, 17, Scola had like he was the first dude that grew up in our neighborhood that had songs on like the box and BT. So um that was a big deal for us. Like, wow, we looked up to him like he was the man, you know what I mean? Like, yo, he was so, and he was. Right. So later we, you know, we had, you know, and you know, b- being in the different groups and guys not working out. Um, me and Dante pretty much was was the core. You know what I mean? Of all of the groups we've been in, you know what I mean? Because we was also best friends as well. So Scola pulled us up and basically told us, look, man, y'all, Dave and Brown, everybody know y'all. You know, y'all can sing. Y'all from around the way. If those guys ain't working out, man, don't give up. Y'all could just do it by yourself. And um, it was kind of difficult for us to, like, fathom and think about because we really was uh, uh, we trying to look for that harmony you know what I mean it was like two man because at the time Jodeci wasn't out you know what I mean I mean Casey and Jojo wasn't out it was Jodeci so we didn't really have no two man really reference you know maybe it was one but still wasn't interested in the two man thing but that conversation with Scola was the beginning of, of our rough ends before we even had the name wow you know and actually I, I've got a few things running through my head. First of all, with that two-part harmony, I used to manage a, uh, a group, a duo. It was two guys, and they were used to saying the same thing, but it was difficult to find other people with the same passion, and that's what it takes. You have to have people, the passion match, the sound match, the whole nine, so I can understand your plight, and I'm glad that you all did decide to continue on because from there you all started jumping into more now i i understand too the name rough is was that about baltimore oh yeah okay definitely was about baltimore um 2019 which was the year before 2020 year 2019 alone um as small as baltimore is suffered 350 murders and that's like a that's like a yearly thing. That's like a yearly number that they hit. Being a place that's so small. So we we grew up in the city. We grew up literally in the rough parts of Baltimore. Us trying to make ends meet or make ends was it was a rough thing. It was like you grinding. You know how they say you grinding, grinding to make that paper? Right. Us it was that's what rough ends was about too at the same time. It's like Money wasn't coming easy, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like a, you know, so you know, what happened place. that took you to that first break? And we know that you had your singles that came out that we absolutely love. But what is it that got you there? And this is something that I always t- love to talk to people about because some folks don't know they've been they've been grinding and working for a long time and they can't get over that hump. What is it that pushed Rough Ends ahead and, and got you actually out there? On well, networking, my mentor used to always say, if, you, if you're not networking pretty soon, you're going to be not working. So okay. our passion had us networking at every event that came through Baltimore City. Everything that came through, we, we even met Patti LaBelle at one of her shows. We sat outside her, her um, concert to meet her. We bust you know, through. We're gonna actually talk about that in our documentary in depth. 
<laughs> we have a documentary, Rough Ends documentary, will be coming out real soon as well. So stay tuned. Add official Rough Ends for the updates on that. But we basically did everything. There was a, a gentleman by the name of Anthony Jeter that had talent shows. And through his talent shows that we used to do, um, we met a guy named Troy Patterson. And through Troy Patterson, we stayed with him for a couple of years. It didn't work out. But we through him, we met somebody named Stephanie Cook. Stephanie Cook introduced us to O.G. Pierce. And O.G. Pierce is the gentleman that really got out there. Now, OG, O.G. is the gentleman that produced songs like this is how we do it. OG's got the flavor. Yeah. That, that Montel Jordan is talking about. You know what I mean? He actually <laughs> passed away. So rest in peace to OG. We gentlemen that really saw us, saw our potential, and is the reason why we had there is a rough end. Oh. And uh, I definitely want to take the time to give him his props and his credit. He's a dear brother that we miss daily. But um, he saw the vision. Introduced us to Dave McPherson and a gentleman by the name of uh, another gentleman by the name of Ron Grant. Rest in peace, Ron Grant, who passed away. But, you know, Dave McPherson and Ron Grant got us over to Epic and the rest is history. Okay. And you all saw many big hits like Someone to Love, you, you know, also um, uh, No More, songs that planted in our heads. I tell you, so many days I was... No more shopping sprees. Oh, so many days, so many days, so many days. How, well, what is it? Who is the person who helped you all with the writing? Because your writing was really on point. And you all writing and producing. Tell, tell us a little bit more about that, too. So, so um, writing and producing and just creating songs, period, is definitely one of the... One of the um, the architectural pieces of rough ends. Like one of the things that really bonded us together was our love for, for writing and creating songs. That was definitely one of the things that bonded us together. So we, we've, we've wrote um, as well as David produced because David, David produces is one of my favorite producers in the world. The guy is really good. That's what I, guys, she's dope. Whatever word you want to use. Anyway, so um, we produced songs on the first album and wrote on the first album. We produced songs on the on all our projects. Um, as we've grown and progressed as writers and creators, producers, singers, performers, um, we we've grown and matured at everything else too as well. So, mm -hmm. David's definitely really really matured as a producer. Mm -hmm. Hence the new album. Um, he produced the whole album and we both wrote the whole album. So um, I want to give a shout out to Corey Rooney, uh, Troy Oliver, the, 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 the writer and producer of Someone to Love You. I want to give a shout out to Darren Lighty and Eddie F, producers of No More Shopper's Breeze, Cliff and Bilal, which are the writers of No More Shopper's Breeze. Right. Um, <laughs> guys like that, man, that was a part of our career. Robin yeah, Robin. Okay. You know what yeah. I mean? Right. And Warren. I mean, I mean, we I mean Brian Cox. I mean, we got some we got some heavy hitters. And just yeah. being like any other environment right. that, that anyone can be in, that environment um is one of the things that we are definitely grateful for because we've been around some amazing they got a chance to work with some amazing producers right. and writers as well other than us right you know you've been out for a while that, that leads me into my question because i remember you know like i said i've been in for a little while and sometimes the the lines get blurred about how long <laughs> you know something is, has been out because i've been in i've seen people in and out of the industry what year did you all come out again uh when you first started and, and got your first, your first big singles going? Well, 2000 was the first big single, but we actually okay. came out in 1999 All right. with uh, with the song on Cameron called right. Freak. And then we had a song on the Blue Streak soundtrack as well that came out. That was uh, written, and, written by, uh, I mean, well, produced by Nokia. And actually the guy, Bruce Stola, that I was talking about that was a part of Drew Hill, He's actually singing a hook on that song. Okay. So um, 
so there's a you know that's kind of when we came out but then 2000 was when no more broke and and hit the hit the airwaves okay because you know uh, that's what I was thinking. It had to be. I knew it had to be somewhere along that line because it's it's been a while. And I, I was thinking back in my head the song and, and how long uh, it was out in the video. Cause we used to play video and everything. And I said it, it's been a little while there, but I just couldn't pinpoint the exact year. You know, you mm -hmm. guys have a, a lot in your history, so my mind is going. I'm like, I would ask so many things at one time. But let's let's talk about the entertainment industry and then we're going to start talking about your new music and your new album and all that you have uh that's coming out but let's talk about the industry over all the changes that you all have seen because i know for me um i started in print and radio and went into television so i work with record labels the whole time along the way and then i watched this transition happen and first i started seeing things like artist development leave and then I started seeing other things mm. happen <laughs> more and more. What did you see in this big transition in this music business? Because people don't realize it's a business. Well, I'm I'm gonna start right there. I'm gonna start right kind of where you left off at <laughs> first. Um the music business, the word business is definitely bigger than music. So right. um not running it like a business, not looking at it like a business, not handling a lot of stuff like a business will definitely get you in trouble, land you in a lot of tough spots. Um, that's something we've learned on levels and that's something I wanna teach and 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 tell just other people that's, that's, that's interested in, in getting into the business. Um, what are around, some of the uh, things that leaving? Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> around the time when artist development started leaving, mm -hmm. I gotta say that was one of the moments that, like, you know, the bunny is go up like up oh, the hood. Oh, that that's that's the beginning of problems right there. Because I know for me, the artist development. I mean, we had we was rough around the edges, but I know some of our counterparts. Or rough around some other edges that that artist development whew, changes a lot. Right. Good God of my like yes. I started and, seeing that first and and then I I, I remember um doing what I was doing still in, in the on the press and media side, but I was always delving in, helping groups through I was in Texas helping South by Southwest and so managing groups and I remember I had an encounter where I won't mention any names. Um, someone very in instrumental in industry wanted to take my group and uh, take them and develop them. And I kind of felt like they just wanted them off the street because they already had some other things going on. So what's some of the things that you all have seen as horror stories? And when I say wanted them off the street, you know, we know how it is. They take uh, artists and put them on a shelf and I was having the same talk um, very recently with uh, Woody Rock from Drew Hill. We did an interview uh, recently and, and we were talking about the same thing, how the business, when they the, sometimes the label will see a competition out there and to keep that competition from giving some heat to their own artists that they're signed, how they'll take them and put them on a shelf and they may never make it off the shelf. So what's some of the things that you all have seen too in this business that are kind of like, you know, rough horror stories that have happened either to you or other people uh, that you have encountered. Shout out to Woody, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, bro. Um, oh, on me? Yeah, man. There's definitely a lot of them. Um, just put it like this, not to mention a drop or name drop because I'm definitely not a name dropper, but let me just say this. Um, one of the most difficult things for artists, creators, singers, however you want to sum it up, one of the most difficult things to do is to, is to have or create a real balance between your personal life and your career. Like a lot of people don't make it through that dynamic. You know, a lot of people can't find a balance in that. And they got to wind up sacrificing one or the other or both. 
Like a lot of people mess up both sometimes trying to trying to trying to balance, trying to find a balance in between. Um, I've seen situations where, uh, I mean, quite a few times, um, people's personal relationships cost them their record deal flat out. Like no exaggeration, like somebody in the group, people in groups, people out of group, whereas though they like, uh, yo, such and such left and, and took the car and left and left us like them kind of situations where it's like, you know, it, I mean, it's, it's that balance It's it's, you know, uh, one of the great things about the internet and about TV and a lot of these reality shows, people get more of a glimpse of how real the life really is because it's our job from when we get in the industry to now, it's our job to make every moment look enjoyable, whether it's enjoyable or not. So if we're on a video shoot and the whole video was hard, when you see the video, you're going to be smiling and feel like we was having the best time of our life. That's just how it is a lot of times. So yeah. if not our, <laughs> so if, 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 if not us, I mean, other people's stuff they've been through, man, that, that they've made look good to put a good spin on. I, I commend people that's, that's trying to make it and live in this industry because it's not an easy thing. It's 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 not. They can tell you what they want, but behind the closed doors, it's, it's a lot of lonely days. It's a lot of hard days. It's a lot of tears and pain and missing yeah. of days and anniversaries and all kind of crazy mess. So there's a lot of horror stories. Man. And then the people right. that have kind of sacrificed themselves um, to get ahead. That's another whole show right there. Uh, mm -hmm. Behind the scenes of the the things that they allow to happen to them. I'm, I'm, I'm dancing around that, but the things that they allow to happen to wow. them in order to progress. And we know mm -hmm. that happens too. We've seen all the horror stories. We, we know that that part of the industry too, there's a, there's a definite darkness. So it's really so good to see when artists like yourself, you know, you make it, you have these, these big hits out there what made you decide to, you all kind of like took a little hiatus. What made you decide to come back into this industry and tell me about the differences that you see now compared to when you first started? Well, definitely. Uh, coming back was our city was in turmoil and, um, you know, Baltimore was on fire. Freddie Gray had passed, his life, passed away. Rest in, so, rest in peace. Rest in heaven. Um, so when we, we reconnected, one of the first songs we did was a song called Time for Change because we wanted to we wanted to do something. Like we we're from Baltimore to see everything that was happening, not just in Baltimore, but it was happening in every ghetto in America. You know what I mean? Pretty much it seemed like. So um, that is really what changed Rough Ends. Like uh, we had already changed in our own personal life but as a group, when we got back together to see like where the world was, like I, I'm still not back from that. I'm not, there's no coming back from everything I've seen. You know what I mean? And that is the one catalyst that is, uh, I think that changed the group forever. You know what I mean? So we got to back together and we wanted to really do music that uplift our community and bring um, wholeness and really bring uh, just peace to our community we want to not be a part of the problem we want to be a part of the solution right, so we decided to make right. um everything that we do is going to be uplifting in, in some kind of way you know what i mean so that's been our mission statement since then right. but to come back to the industry and see you know everything's digital it's instagram you know what i mean we used to <laughs> people buying a cd you know what i mean right. those days are done so Yes. You know, um, it's a new world and it, it was it was scary definitely for me. Mm -hmm. But um I realized that even in this new world, people still want real music. Right. And I call it real music. Real music is songs or classic music. Mm -hmm. Songs that are not just here today and gone tomorrow. Right. Songs like Someone to Love You is gonna get played a hundred years from now. 
because it's a real song and it's something that has depth to it and it's just not a surface. Right. So um, we decided to keep that same formula and make sure that we write things and make music that has depth um, and that's not surface. Okay. So like you, that's like been our said, mantra. A hundred percent organic r and I like that term that you all have because it, it definitely is organic. Um, you know, I really, I love r and I'm not no, no shade at all to hip hop. Because I, I was in worked in hip hop for over twenty years, but I love the R and B sound. And what happened is, uh, I have a friend. We from time to time <laughs> we would just get on the internet, send one another messages uh, back mm -hmm. and forth about R and B songs. And your song, ironically, we talked about it just before I even found out I was doing the interview. It was mm -hmm. something to love you. And we're like, ah. They jam, you know, because we just we just love, like you say, organic R and B. Um, with that in mind, and you're out now, let's let's go ahead and talk about the new singles and and rebirth. Let's talk about rebirth because I guess in a way this is the rebirthing of Rough Ends into the era where we are now. Like you said, we're all digital now. Everything is totally <laughs> different. Let's talk about rebirth and talk about your singles. Uh, be the one and congratulations. You sound like a lady with a hammer over there hitting it on. <laughs> I ain't lying. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what it is. All I mean, right. I like that. That's what it is on so mm -hmm. many levels for, for us, our brotherhood, for uh, everyone we're building after 2020. We've all had a very rough year. Um, the rebirth of a certain class of R&B. Um, shout out to all our counterparts. I got albums coming out from Donnell Jones to H-Town right. to uh, Raheem Devon. Um, so a class of R&B right. and um, um, a certain kind of maturity in music um, is what we really, really focused on. I mean, so... We get to the Rebirth album. Right there. I, I, I want to interrupt you real quick and just say this. When you say that maturity, again, no shade to the, the young artists that's out there. But what I love about R&B is when you don't have to describe the entire sexual act that you're going to perform in order to do the good music. Go ahead, brother. I just said something similar to that. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. But... Um, but it's like, for instance, like, okay, in my 20s, I'm not saying I would have been totally different, but in my 20s, like in a lot of our 20s and teens, we done things differently from how we would have did them, say, in my 40s, right? So apologize. I mean, not apologize. I'm thinking about the old album. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, mm -hmm. which is uh, both of us, both of one of our favorite songs, me and David. Um, it kind of sums up like the album in a way. Right. Meaning, so the situation is she's moving on or you're moving on. Well, she's moving on and it's not a breakup because um, everything ain't got to be a breakup. Everything ain't got to be brash and obtuse like a breakup break your arm breaking out like you know break is so 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 harsh you know what i'm saying so moving on is different moving on can be y'all already broke up but y'all still holding on and a lot of us know about that so moving on is knowing we broke up for a reason we didn't work out for a reason and it's not because you're a bad person or i'm a bad person because a lot of people that break up I'm not bad people. <laughs> they like people, people that only commit crimes break up or something like that. You know what I mean? So it's like a lot of good people are not right for each other. That's just that's just reality. But it's about being mature enough to say, listen, um, I'm glad you found what works for you. I'm glad you found what makes you happy. If it wasn't me, you know what I'm saying? It it might be hard to say and hear for some people because. We're human beings, we're emotional creatures, you know what I'm saying? We have feelings, and that's just a side effect of being human. But 
to to own your feelings and say, look, I do got feelings for you. I probably do got some feelings for you, but I know we ain't right for each other. You know what I'm saying? And I know you ain't going to be happy with me or, or I feel like I ain't going to be happy with you or we haven't been happy. And you found somebody to make you happy. So I, I, I'm i happy for you in that regard. You know what I'm saying? So that's grown man. That's that's grown woman. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it take like a that. lot. Yeah, I'm not going to say I'm perfect. I'm not going to say, you know what I'm saying? I was always this way, but that's growth. That's growth. That's healing. That's a certain level of understanding. And um, that's the kind of R&B and the kind of purposeful producing, which my brother, my brother produced the whole album. We both wrote the whole album. So this is us. This is our perspective. Grown man. Right. I love you know what I'm saying? That. <laughs> Life, love, you know, uh, uh, moving on, mm -hmm. loving on a person, all of that kind of stuff. You know, like you said, not talking down on nobody else or nothing else, but. <laughs> Knowing when it's over. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? To add Perfect. to that, too, for the young people, uh -huh. um, you know, this it's, it's for, you know, for young people that's writing, I would say, uh, Cause you know, some I'm listening to somebody. I'm thinking about somebody listening to this. Could be thinking, well, you know, you older. That's why it's deep. But there's some young people. If you take your time and write, um, and really be creative, you know what I mean, and use uh, use your creative ability. It's about substance. I think that's the real thing that we're getting to. You know what I mean? So it doesn't matter, you know, what you're talking about, but. If you, there's substance there that it has me like, wow, you know what I mean? Then it's it's just not a trendy thing. Like, it's just surface. There's a lot of surface music out here. Mm. And that, I think that's the major difference between, um, I guess, the, the distinction, if you will, between the two. Surface music versus substance music. Substance music has the ability to be around here for 100 years. Yep, staying power. You have a lot of staying power with the substance music. And and I totally agree. And I, I just really wanted to circle back to on, uh, you're talking about the industry just now and the changes of, of how it is. How is it now trying to promote, I mean, I know you're doing interviews like this and and uh, what is it like now? What What is the procedure and the process now when you're bringing out something, especially coming out of a pandemic? So how difficult is that trying to get this whole new project out there? Well, I think it's, um, I'm going to go first again. I think it's not, I don't see it as difficult to me because, because of the internet, you know, um, it's new and it felt weird at first to me, but at the same time, we can talk to, you know, it's platforms like you that we can still connect with our fans. I might not be on um, BT or VH1, whatever, but we still, we can do interviews like this and still reach hundreds of thousands of our fans through the internet. And we ain't even left the house. You know what I mean? So it's it's still, I still think it's it's a uh, a wonderful thing. Man. I think it's a blessing to, to be able to do it. And I see it in a positive way. Dante, you can, you know, take over, brother. Yeah, I definitely wanted to add to that by saying, um, you know, you could you could definitely look at the downsides, the downs, the downsides to stuff, you know. Um, but David, as well as myself, we're very optimistic when it comes to trying to find the positive and everything. So this is something that we love. So you got to think about it like this. Do I love it enough to let it go or do I got to let it go because of how things change or or is this the kind of love where I love it enough to find a way? <laughs> no. So in this case, we're going to find a way to make a way. That's what our people have been doing That's forever. Right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, they twist it up on it. What are we going to do? We're going to tell our fans, I can't because this, nah, I mean, listen, some of us took pay cuts. A lot of us took pay cuts on different levels for different things. But um, when you find a way to make a way, mm 
first of all, you got to find your way back to the music, back to the craft, and then start figuring everything else after that. You feel what I'm saying? Who knows? Like, Leonardo da Vinci was never crazily famous when he was alive. Mm-hmm. One of the best creators ever in, in, in history. Like, but he kept working. Right. If he would have stopped at the 16th chapel, all the rest of the stuff he did after that would have never been created. So right. as creators, we look at ourselves in that in that kind of perspective. You know, with, with respect to everybody that came before us. But if Stevie wanted to stop making albums after his first, second album, because he didn't think he was making what he should have been making, like, what will we have today? We still have Stevie, but not all of the stuff Stevie did that we've, we've been blessed with. So we look at ourselves in that way, like, it's change. It might be crazy. We don't know how the show's going to be, the album sells, <laughs> but we know we got fans. We know we got people Passion. still want to go R&B. So what are we going to do? You know, and, and people love that. Though. Like I said, that R&B, that passion, I mean, all I have to do is just mention your name of your group, mention your songs. People are right in there. So you, you definitely have that on your side, too. Um, I um, the name of my show is Art Imitates Life. You know, we do everything from entertainment to politics on, on this show. And um, I, I like being able to talk to people in different walks of life now instead of just solely music, as, as I did for so many years, music and entertainment. Um, art imitates life. What does that mean to you? I wanted to ask you that before we got out of here today. Mm. It takes life. Um, I love that, by the way. That's oh, me too. Cool. That's that's beautiful. With them. Um, all right. I'm, I, I, I can say a little bit and then let David jump into it because I know that struck a nerve with him too. So whether it's David and his son, David and his son takes photography and does pictures. Whether it's Rough Ends, which is me and David, who's who's writing about life, who's writing about our experiences. Um, all of it is just that. It's 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 capturing the beauty that's in front of us. Whether whether we're writing about it, whether we're singing about it and putting it to song form. Um, like this album, this album is, this album for me is a representation of exactly what you said. Like to us, it's a it's a collection of work that that came from the minds of two young men from Baltimore. Um, that's that's given a perspective on on life and love and 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 break up and make up in our art form in our sort of way. And now you know what I'm saying with, with our melodies and. And our instruments and whatever the case is, but it's talking about real life. It's real stories. It's talking about <laughs> it's talking about stuff we've we've lived actually lived through, or things we've seen in front of us that we know people can relate to because it's like you said, it's it's uh, it's art imitating life. Okay, All right. so let's take on it, David. Um, everything you just said, man, I think it's, uh, you hit it right on the head. I think art is, is, uh, I think life will always impact art. You know, I'll say it that way. And most artists you see in their creations, life, you know what I mean? Um, or their perspective on life. So, um, definitely before we lose track of time or before this thing hang out, we will definitely want to let everybody know to go to add official rough ends. And go follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We're going to see uh, a lot of updates. We got a, a Rough Ends documentary that's going to be coming out soon. We got the new single, um, uh, the new video for the single, Be The One, is going to be dropping April 2nd as well. The same day that our album is going to be available everywhere, which is Rebirth. So go support, support. If you want to get a pre-order of the album, you can go to www.srgstore. Dot com and you can pick this up and get yourself a CD. If those of you that come from the golden era uh, and love to collect R&B um, music like I do, you want your CD, you can definitely get that. We'll have send that out to you as well. You so collect we'll all the information in the, in the uh, description as well. Indeed. And Tanya, thank you for, for having mm-hmm. us, man. We <laughs> definitely want to give you a shout out because it's mm-hmm. platforms like yourself, 
Thank you. You're a veteran. You just ain't like some of the other interviewers. You are a real veteran and veteran in this game. You put so, your uh, dues in. You paid your dues. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you just paid your dues. And you, you know, because of We hope that you have enjoyed this episode of Our Imitates Live with Tanya Dixon, so be sure to like and subscribe. And also check us out on all of our other social media. Thank you all for tuning in and checking out Rough Ends here on Our Imitates Live. It's always wonderful. Love my R&B to talk to those R&B groups, uh, the multi award winning ones like today, Rough Ends and all the singles and things that they've done, uh, an extensive history out there. So I hope that you all in entertainment have taken the time to really listen. These are veterans, folks, and they can tell you how things really go. All right. So stay tuned for upcoming weeks. We'll be doing more. And also the living room is coming back again, y'all. So stay tuned for that. But thanks again for tuning in. And I hope that you all still reach out to us and let us know what you think about the show. If you want to be on the show and all the information, social media and uh, email addresses, all that is down below in the, in the description. All right. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Tanya Dixon. We'll see you next time on Art Emma Takes Life.